Hi, and welcome back to Heroes of the Bible. I'm your hostess, Misty Winkler. Today, we're gonna to talk about the most important hero of the Bible, the most famous hero of the Bible. Um, hopefully, y'all have already guessed it, but if you haven't, it's Jesus. So today, I'm spending my time sharing uh, with you about Jesus. There is nobody that has lived that is more important than Jesus. He is the human divine son of God. He was born of Virgin Mary, and he was born as king of the Jews in Bethlehem toward the end of Herod the Great's reign. In his early years, Jesus was taken to Nazareth where he was raised by his mother Mary and Joseph. Jesus was referred to as Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph, in uh, John 1.45. Um, the only childhood incident that was recorded is his Passover trip to Jerusalem at 12 years old. And there's more detail in Luke 2, 41 through 52. I encourage you to go read that. Um, after he was baptized by John in Matthew 3, 13 through 17, Jesus began his public ministry. At that point, he chose 12 disciples who went with him as he taught, healed, performed miracles, and preached about the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. During Passover week, Jesus was arrested by religious leaders and later handed over to the Roman ruler Pilate. He was uh, sentenced to death on the cross. After three days, Jesus rose again. Um, that, that's in John 20, Acts 1, 1 through 3. And 40 days later after that, he ascended into heaven, Acts 1, 6 through 11. Jesus died to pay the price for our sin from 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. And he made it possible for us to have a relationship with God, Romans 5, 11. Jesus was God's plan of salvation from the beginning. In Genesis 3, 15, God told the deceiving serpent, from now on, you and the woman will be enemies. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This was a prophecy or promise that Jesus would defeat Satan and death. The Jewish people were waiting for the mighty Messiah to come and rescue them. He did come, but in the humble form of a baby. <coughs> Excuse me. Not what they were expecting. Jesus' Jesus's name means Savior. He is also called Jesus Christ. Christ is a title that means anointed. I actually just learned that, believe it or not. In the Bible, his other name, not, not that he's called Jesus Christ, but what Christ means. In the Bible, his other, his other names are Emmanuel, which means God with us. I, that's Isaiah 7, 14. Messiah, which is the anointed one. Mark 14, 61 through 62. Son of man. <clears throat> this title was Jesus' favorite way of referring to himself. I learned that too. Mark 2.10, Acts 7.56. Son of God, Mark 1.11. The Word of God, John 1.1-18. 1, 1 the Holy One of God, John 6-69. I'm sorry, John 6.69. Um, the Lord, 1 Corinthians 12.3. And God, John 20.28. When Jesus was born, God's promise of a Savior was fulfilled. There is one more promise that still needs to be fulfilled, the promise of Christ's return, John 14, 3, which is what we're all waiting on. Until then, Jesus commands his followers to tell others about him, Acts 1, 8 through 11. And we have to be careful we, we don't get the mindset of we're just waiting for Jesus to return and we're, that we're in a waiting period and that we're not actively doing anything because right now um, it's crucial that we are, you know, doing and grabbing as many people as we can, probably more than ever. Um, and I was thinking about it, I've referred to this before, but you know, like when you're younger, if you were in athletics or if you did like, you know, baseball or, or um, softball or t-ball, um, the, the, the coach tells you, you know, run past the first base, run past first base and don't slow down before you get to the base. I, I remember my coach 
constantly drilling that in my head and it was like don't slow down before you get to the base don't stop you know you are so, you're, you know you run full speed and you curve out and um, even in track you know we've seen where people are giving it their all their whole the whole race and when right before they get to the finish line they slow down and and you know you don't end up winning because you've got other people that have saved up their energy and then they take off past you but the point is I want to finish this race out stronger than I than when I started um, and I think right now you know we need to be running our fastest and giving it our all and doing our best because it's it's more crucial toward the end of the race and so right now it's so important to step it up and and not just because we're we're getting closer to that to his return um, that we kind of slow down and then we kind of get lazy and we you know we forget um, really what we're here for and what we need to be doing so in my mind it's like okay now's the time to step it up now's the time you know to be super passionate now the, now's the time to really do as much as you can in, in a short amount of time to be able to pull as many people with us as we can um, and that's his command um, it, for his and until then Jesus commands his followers to tell others about him so you know if that's been something in the past that has been hard for you um, ask him you know God show me with my personality and with my giftings show me the best way um, for me to be able to reach people for you and I think you'll be surprised he, he'll provide you know the resources he'll provide the way um, be in tune with him to be able to know how to do that the very best that you can because um, I tell people all the time, you know, there's people that I can't reach because I haven't been through what they've been through. And so, you know, you may be over here feeling like, well, you have no idea what I've done. How can I even help people? Well, to be honest, you're going to be able to preach to, to people that have done the same thing as you have in the past um, more passionately because you've been through it or been pulled out of something, if that makes sense. Um, that's why there's so many you know, people with so many different stories. Everybody has a story and everybody's been through stuff. Um, but again, like I said, I could not passionately reach people about something that I have not really, you know, had a lot of experience or dealt with. Um, that's why we encourage you as a Christian, you know, to um, embrace what God has given you and the gifts that he's given you and who you are as a person and your personality to really get out there and and reach people that you know nobody else might be able to reach and he created you uniquely you're not an accident he made you exactly how he wants you to be that doesn't mean that we are just lazy and don't ever try to improve ourselves but we need to embrace who got who the person God has made us to be and once you get once you're able to do that it's so it's so important for you to be able to um, I feel you know um, to be able to be used at capacity, I guess, because if you're never happy with yourself or you never love yourself, you're not going to be able to love others <clears throat> the way he needs you to. So that's something that's very important to, to work on first and ask God, you know, help me, help me in this area. How do I even do this? You know, um, we need to do God's will no matter what. Uh, Luke 22, 41 through 44 um, you know, when you're, when you really step it up and you're trying to do God's will and you're really trying to live for him, yes, you're probably going to lose some family members. Yes, you're probably going to lose some friends. Yes, you're probably going to have people that look at you and say, you're crazy. What are you doing? What are you thinking? You're nuts. What are you, you know, why are you, why are you going this way? Um, we have to think about, you know, Jesus going to the cross and what he went through and what he dealt with. And, you know, we've never gotten to the point of sweating blood or even close. So this, you know, stuff that we go through here on earth with family and friends and, and you know, being maybe talked about or stuff because we're serving the Lord is menial compared to what Jesus went through. And we have to be willing to lay everything down, everything, family, everything to be able to do what he's asking us to do. Um, when you look at um, Noah you know, and he was building that huge ark, and I'm sure what people were, you know, making fun of him, and it never rained before, and they had no idea what he's doing. He had no idea. He was just being obedient, and 
in every one of these characters that I've taught about so far, obedience is the key word. And for me, it's like, you know, we've come this far and again, being at the end of the race, I want to be, I want to feel every nudge from him. You know, if he wants me to move to the right a little or move to the left a little or go this way or don't do that or do this, I want to be so sensitive to him and so in tune with him to know exactly what he wants every step of the way. A great movie to watch um, is Pilgrim's Progress. And it really helped me in my walk, even though it might seem elementary to some of you. There's so much to that. And it, 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 it might seem elementary, but if you really watch it and really think about the storyline, there's so much spiritual depth to that movie. And it's so impactful. Um, it was to me. Um, and looking at it from the outside in, like seeing somebody's Christian walk and how easy it is for us to see that path that he wants us on. And how easy it is for that person to step off the path um, that he, you know, that he did not provide for us. But it's like, oh, well, this looks okay. This looks good. This might be better. It might be better. I mean, it might be, it might look good. It might sound okay. It might, you might think it's better. But in all reality, this path is the best because this is the one he wants you on. So um, when you are, you know, walk in the walk and it's and and daily you know for me it's like god show me and i'm i'm not perfect by any means um i like to think i am a lot but i'm not and it's like god, you know daily god show me where you want me what you need me to do you know where you want me to go and of course we do our our stuff in the natural we go you know we go to work and we take care of the kids do all these things but you know in ministry um sense it's like you know in everything you do even when you go to the grocery store you know god if there's somebody i need to um be you know come in contact with whether it's for them or for me send me down that aisle show me and and that might sound silly and that might sound super spiritual and one of our leaders in the very beginning i remember him talking and he would say um he would it would and he would say um everywhere he went even the a restaurant he went to he would say um you know, Lord, show me where you want me to sit, you know, seat me next to somebody, give me favor with, and at the, at the time I thought, well, that's a little much, but I see now and I understand now because I feel like we miss so many <clears throat> blessings and so much stuff that God has for us and other people miss so many blessings because we're not, we're not in tune with the Father and we've got to be so in tune with the Father um, to be able to, you know, um, to do our best for him. Um, the main scripture I feel like to sum this up is John 14, 6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. There's only one way. Um, so anyway, that's, that's so important. Um, I'm going to do a couple questions here. The first question is, what prophecy was fulfilled? The prophecy quoted in Matthew 2, 5 through 6 about the birth of Jesus comes from Micah 5, 2 in the Old Testament. In Bethlehem, Judea, the wise men said, For this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. The wise men searched for the king of the Jews. However, Jesus is more than that. He is the King of Kings, Revelations 19 through 16. I'm sorry, Revelations 19, 16. I did it again. Whose kingdom will never end, Luke 1, worship him. Next question, did Jesus ever do anything bad? That's a great question. Jesus was God in human form. So we know that he lived a completely sinless life. We know that he didn't do anything sinful as a little kid. Um, it says here he may have spilled milk by mistake, um, just as any little kid would, but he, he never, he didn't ever sin. Uh, was Jesus really human? Jesus really was a human being, just like you. It was no act. Jesus really became full-fledged human while being here with us on this earth. When he suffered on the cross, he was really suffering. And when he died, he really died. It was all just as if it had happened to any of us. And I think that's so hard for us to comprehend because, you know, 
um, when we're when we're thinking about this, you know, it's like how can that how can you know in in your mind, it's like how does that work? How can that be? Um, but it just is. And sometimes I think if we try to overthink these things, that's when we end up getting in trouble. So it's like, okay, God, you know what? This is the these are the facts. This is the truth. This happened. Wow. And you know, we are. I don't think our mind can completely understand. You know. Um, the depth of of him of God, and so you know, there's a lot of questions that we all have, and you know, we get to heaven, we can ask those, or like I say, when you get to heaven, you're probably not even the you know going to care to have all your questions answered like that. It'll probably be completely different. But anyway, how is Jesus in your heart? By asking him to be Lord of your life, when you invite Jesus into your heart. What you are really doing is saying that now he is the Lord of your that now he's the Lord of your life. You trust him. Uh, you trust him with everything and will obey him and live for him, and he is always with you. So the minute we have Jesus in our heart, we become perfect and we never sin again, right? No, wrong. Um, it's we are a work in progress. I am a work in progress. I've been doing this for a long time now. I've been in this relationship with him. And, um, again, I'm still not perfect. <laughs> I'm not anywhere close to being perfect. Um, and there's so much that, you know, I need to improve and work on, but I've come so far. And so sometimes I think this is overwhelming. You know, it's like when you ask Jesus in your heart and, and he saves you, then it's like my life, you know, what, how do I even do this? That's why we have to, our faith and trust in him is so important in this walk because, if we try to do it on our own or by ourselves, it's just not, it's not, it doesn't work that way. And you're going to exhaust yourself trying to do this stuff out of your own power when it's, it's just not possible. Um, with God, come on, say it. Anything's possible. Everything's possible with God. So anyway, I know this is, it might seem kind of an elementary teaching, but I was, Again, I was 19 when I received Jesus in my heart. And so something like this would have been huge for me to get my hands on, to be able to really kind of comprehend and understand, you know, what this looked like and how this was. And some of these questions, you know, even now about the Bible and some of these characters, I have questions that are probably questions I, you know, answer. I should already know. I, I guess, you know, they say there's no such thing as a stupid question. I feel like there are, but... Um, but there's, you know, it's okay to ask questions. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me today.